All right. Bartender about renting that room in dirt water. It'd be nice to have a base of operations. Oh, this place looks a lot nicer. There's lots available. Can I buy shit? I want to buy all the land and turn it into a giant brothel. That is my only desire in this world. Something's wrong with your record player. Something's very wrong with your record player. Alright. Room? Finest room? How much does it cost? He paid a month in advance right before getting himself killed by bandits. Alright. Cool. I'll take a free room. Poker room? I sense an opportunity for some dicker in. Stables full up. Play poker? What are the rules? Followed by hundreds of weird rules in tiny print. Three mustachioed king of spades and four... Two fours... Four twos of clubs count as a flush, okay? A Tennessee flush beats a Utah flush. What the fuck is a Utah flush? An ace beats a pair of kings. Okay. A flush beats a full house. A five is twice as valuable as a one-eyed jack of hearts. What's a one-eyed jack of hearts? A player caught with a pocket deuce must immediately hand ten, 11 meat to the player on their left. A 7 is twice as valuable as 3 eighths. F 4 four jacks and 4 deuces of cl Deuce? Wait. <laughs> Fuck's a deuce? I have questions. Any player holding a jack must immediately double their bet. A player spitting anywhere other than a split... Then a spittoon must immediately double their- Wait! Spittoon. Spittoon! This is a spittoon, which is a sort of brass bucket that people spit into instead of spitting on the floor. Because not spitting at all is not an option in this society, I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're already pretty intimately familiar with spittoons already, sicko. Look, the Jewel Saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting pit. But this spittoon is still a spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside it isn't fancy rancid, rancid tobacco spit. I don't give a fuck. Here we go again. Alright, fine. You are now hunkered down next to a brass filth bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or emptied because you're near the desert and the ambient humid humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it communi as it accumulates. So that's good. No, that's bad, because it's only the water part of the spit that evaporates. This brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit. The toxins and filth that do not evaporate. Several years worth, distilled and concentrated until it's the consistency of molasses. Hey, molasses is delicious, so I don't see a problem here. People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts into the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. I search it. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something the color of and viscosity of maple syrup. Except, except instead of maple, it's flavored with the insides of the mouths of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them. Disgusting. And have never brushed their teeth. Yeah. It feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Except instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like somebody ran over a skunk, waited a week, then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. I'm already in this shit, I don't care. You found something. It's a tacky, filth-covered porcelain cow figurine. A useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children. Assuming you're able to have any, and you hate them. I am very potent, and I hate everyone. <laughs> Alright, time to play some poker. You sit down at a poker table. The, a dealer emerges from somewhere in the back and sits down next to you. The lady to your right and introduces herself as Bertha, and the player to your left says his name is Red. The dealer tells you that the ante is 20 meat. Ante up! 
You ante up. Bertha and Red toss in 20 meat each. The dealer gives the deck a, deck a shuffle, then deals. A hand, a hand of cards slides across the table to you. It's a totally garbage hand. A suicidal jack. A suicide jack. A pair of sevens. A pair of sevens of clubs. And a queen. It's the first round. The pot is... Pot of 60 meat, and you estimate your chances of winning are about 10%. Moxlessly strategize. I don't know what that means. You arrange your cards in a, into a more aesthetically pleasing spread. 20% win chance. Continue the game. I shall glamorously wage. You get your valet to, to bet an additional 20 meat for you. It's the last round of betting. Let's do or die. Um. Forcefully strategize. Reveal your cards. You lost. Damn it. Ante up. Wait. You check, and then you check your privilege. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Thanks, game. Alright, I have a thousand meat again. With these thousands of meat, we can do something great. I have slop. What's that do? What do I get if I have slop? <laughs> Ah, this is my room. Cool. Wait! <laughs> moving that so you guys can see this. I love these two. <laughs> these are my new favorite characters. Alright, back to normal. Ah, <sighs> not sponsored. Yet. Okay, let's go up to this ranch. Out in the middle of the desert, you find an abandoned minecart. Sitting on a section of minecart track about 12 feet long, which sits nowhere in particular and ends even less of somewhere in particular. Refined meat. Unrefined meat nugget. Nice. Hey, Stacks! Hey, look, toys. No. <laughs> beans! You got blackened beans? <laughs> That's just spell damage. It's a lockbox. True to its name, it's locked. <laughs> cool, thanks, game. The cows got to here. Got jelly descar go, instant grits, clove drops. I lose boards, so it is. Hey, partner, what in the Sam Hill? It's hell, you bastard. You rotten varmint. It's what in the Sam Hill? Beat your ass, woman. Think you have rats in the Wild West? God, hell no, you don't. That dog don't hunt. <laughs> What's the skull painted on the wall for? Yeah, that's a little weird. Who would do a thing like that? Why? Hmm. Maybe the cows. <laughs> that that would be my guess. Hey, look, an outhouse. Between the smoke and the noise, you're guessing that the contents of this outhouse are more dangerous than the average outhouse contents. <laughs> Ow. God damn it. Ha! Eat snake!
That is the most useless piece of cover I have ever seen. Get him! Woo! That is how we do it. Susie has become stronger. Oh, I can't do that more. Bones! A locket. I have a charred locket now. You motherfucking tumbleweed! Tumbleweeds can suck my dick. Fuck tumbleweeds. Why loading? Alright, there's a wonder button. If there's anything I'm good at, it's pressing buttons I shouldn't press. Your heart beats as you buy a floating scowl hole. What the fuck was that? <laughs> buy a floating scowl hole. <laughs> Brain! <laughs> Your heart skips a beat as you spy a floating cow skull in the di in the middle distance. It doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. Smack it. I'ma beat it with a fucking snake. Oh, you fucking go. Cause no notch in the stock of her barrel. Stock of her rifle. One of the fucking two. I don't know. More wandering. That requires lock picking, apparently. You spot a cemetery in the, on the horizon. The lettering over the, the gate says the Dave Yard, which seems oddly specific. I'm going there right now. Ooh, rattle me bones. Smack. Smack the rattle me bones. Snack. Man, I'm glad I brought you along, Susie, because you just, you fuck shit up. I love how they have little xylophone music every time they do, like, anything. <laughs> Hell yeah, you do that, human shield. I am garbage compared to Susie. Like, fuck. Do I, have a, do I have a gun that would be better? What do I have right now? The deputy pistol. Ah, yes, the pistol. It is also a deputy. I kind of just stole that, didn't I? Free lunch! Vienna blood sausages. And they said there was no such thing as free lunch. God damn it. God damn it, game. Alright, Dickens beating time. You dare? You dare to oppose me. I shall show you what it means to oppose me, you utter piece of shit. Hey, you can't hit me with spooky damage, that's illegal. Die. You know, those big marble things with the drawers full of skeletons. Open one. Ow. The skeleton of Dave Dalton. They're all Dave, aren't they? They're just all gonna be Dave. Alright, what's over here? I see. I understand. I know the way. This is a pile of m mostly burnt rags that maybe used to be a person? Investigate it. A gore splattered scroll, some human ashes, and a robe recipe. Delivery of 150 black silk robes. Nice. I, I can tell where this is going. Read it! You scrape all the little jib, all the largest of the giblets off the scroll and read it. It says, take a pile of human ashes, spread them out in the shape of a person inside of a red chalk 
ritual circle, then sprinkle them with stardust and place a mostly perfect, or better, glass sphere where the heart would be. Anyway, that's the gist of it. The actual text has a lot more of these and those and such and such as like that. Such as like that. That's Plus there's a bunch of weird gibberish that you're supposed to say out loud while you're doing it. I wanna say it! This is a human in the final stage of that whole ashes to ashes thing. Well part of one at least. A human gets harder to keep track of when it's in powder form. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is the cremated earthly remains of a person. Someday they'll refer to these as cremains, but you will not approve. You are correct. I will not approve. Rest in pieces, ashes. It's a big stone sarcophagus. I can perform the ritual? You don't have any human ashes on you. Damn it! I need to find more human ashes. A skull with an odd tag on it. Inter cemetery loan. What? The tag on this skull has a serial number. It says it was borrowed from the submission catacombs on that that date. Jeez, this thing is really late. The back on this tag has has the catacombs address on it. Skulls. Check them out. Okay. That's a big map. Well, I'm gonna wander around some more. The Shaggy Dog Cave. Go there. That requires foraging, but I don't have foraging. All right, how much XP do I have? 70 unspent. Hornswoggle and a dead eye. I think I'll take those. I want to hornswoggle people, but I also want to shoot people. Do you have anything to say about this? There's another ranch out this way. Butterfield Ranch. Dairy farm, mainly. Alright, we can check that out. That's bad. There's a plaque bolted to a cave wall. A record of the events of the expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave. Alright. Having acquired through various and sundry means, a story of which is interesting in its own right, but better save for another time, a map purported to lead to a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous highwayman and train robber Black Cole Jr. in the years before the cows came home. Ah, Jim Play Jim Plackwright, along with my three compatriots, these being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy Dog Cave and the aforementioned treasure. Intriguing. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it. Four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, a mining pick, a large coil of rope, one basket of eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware. My own collection of pl blank plaques and engraving tools, one large and shaggy dog, and a butt for. A what? What is a butt for? Ah, it's a barrel. Read it. After traveling for two and a half days south to the south and east, we could have just said southeast, we arrived at a small town named Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon, and each ordered a beer, except for Cy, who was satisfied with, satisfied with water. Cool. The barman provided our drinks as requested, and then withdrew to a small wooden box from underneath the withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar, asking us if we cared to witness something really interesting. Considering we had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he'd never been there personally, but gave us rough directions, which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. 
there is a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had been tampering with our wagon. Unfortunately, the only supply... Fortunately, su the only supplies missing were the butt for and the entire basket of eggs, apart from the one that Doug had concealed within a pocket for safekeeping. What the hell, Doug? Y you gonna do something fun with that, Doug? Gonna do something fun and a little risque? Gonna post that on fucking Pornhub and make a million dollars? I bet that's what you're gonna do. Piece of shit. We also discovered that the dog had absconded with one of the horses, forcing Cy and Nate, Nate and Cy, after draw, a drawing of lots, to share. The dog absconded with a horse. Something sounds fishy about that, but I will continue. There's gonna be nothing at the end of this, isn't there? After acquiring the barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement butt for her, we headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly upon us, though we took a small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass, a, pass the time on the trip and resist becoming dazed from the heat and susceptible to desert mirages, we, we exchanged stories of our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of length. You might as well at this point. However, I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during the trek through the desert. The first was one or two, was two or three hours out of dirt water when Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metallic object, partially buried in the sand. It was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in the wagon with our other tools. Oh god. Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribesman, who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired as to our destination, and replied, and we replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, although we did not disclose the reason for our journey. The goblin confirmed that we were heading on the right course and mentioned only that he had a short time earlier witnessed a large and sh shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed and continued on our way. <laughs> Sometime later, we, had, we encountered a large adobe hut, occupied by two identical-seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gra gratefully accepted, and it and introduced themselves as hermits. This struck me as, as peculiar, given that there were two of them, but I felt it would be rude to question them on that point. Oh. Yeah. There's a plaque bolt into the cave wall here. Gee, I wonder. One of the hermits confirmed that they were near that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and another hermit confirmed that what his brother said was true. They commented that they had seen a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed that this was a usual, <laughs> an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for a butt for it, and we continued on our way excited to be finally nearing our goal. Cool. After two more hours, we, caref we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave. Carefully keeping our excitement in check, lest we become incautious, we unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon and took brief, brief respite in the cool shade of the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug unpocketed and shared the egg, which he had saved from our basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. This one, right? No, I'm, I'm not reading the rest of this. Is there anything at the end of this cave? I think that does that about does it. I'm gonna go kill myself now. <laughs>